All right, we are heading into black. Uh, but first, I want to friendly reminder of the day. We are now partnered with Bonfire and Equip Creatures. Magic merch for magic fans inspired by the places, the characters, the cards, the type lines that you know and love, uh, the colloquialisms. Some great magic merch here for magic fans. Definitely check it out. Bonfire.com slash store slash equip for all of your magic needs. My favorite one is this Dockside Ramen shirt uh, from Kamigawa. It's really cool. I love it quite a bit. The Dockside Chef is one of my favorite cards because I love ramen a lot. Uh, definitely check it out. Bonfire.com slash store slash equip. Get yourself some cool merch. All of these are available in like sweaters or crops or long sleeve or pullovers. Um, definitely check them out. And be sure to hit us up on social media if you've got any suggestions for, for new designs. I like this Morboros one because I love the way the Marlboro box is such an iconic piece of packaging. Um, this Morboros design is hilarious and I like it quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, definitely check it out. Bonfire.com slash store slash equip. Let's get on to uh, more cards, shall we? Shall we? Okay, we're jumping into black. First up, we have Aether Blade Agent. One in a black for a 1-1 one, one human rogue with death touch. Love it already. Pay four and a Phyrexian blue to transform it as a sorcery, and it turns into Gitaxian Mind Stinger, a 3-3 three, three Phyrexian rogue with death touch. Whenever Mind Stinger deals combat damage to a player or battle, draw a card. This is going to be amazing. I love it. I want it. And it's only a common. I'm extra in love with it. Next up, we have Archpriest of Shadows. Three black black for a 4-4 four, four human warlock with backup one. It has death touch as well. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Again, for reminder, backup means when this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following abilities until end of turn. So if you give that 1-1 counter to another creature you control, it also gains death touch, and if it does the combat damage to a player or battle, you get to return something from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, that's pretty powerful. Next up, we have Ayara, Widow of the Realm. One black black for a 3-3 legendary creature elf noble with tap it to sacrifice another creature or artifact Ayara deals X damage to target opponent or battle. You gain X life, where X is the sacrificed permanent's mana value. Pretty good all on its own. Then you can pay five and a red to Phyrexian to transform it into Ayara Furnace Queen. Or for Phyrexian Elf Noble. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target artifact or creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile it at the beginning of your next end step. If you thought Rakdos Sack and Rakdos Reanimator was important already, it's going to be more important and deadly now. Um, Ayara is three mana, and it transforms with just five mana and two life or six mana. Um, this is going to be a banger in the Rakdos Sacrifice and Reanimator decks. Uh, next up, we have Battle, a Bladed Battle Fan. One in a black for an artifact equipment with flash. When Bladed Battle Fan enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. That creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus O. Oh. So it's really useful for to give something indestructible for a turn. 
and also useful if your deck cares about artifacts or equipments. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of just a boring, useless equipment. Plus one, plus O oh is is not really worth the cardboard it's printed on, but I think it'll be interesting to play in limited because you give something indestructible at the drop of a hat or a fan, if you will. Next up, we have Blight Reaper Thalid. Look at this chunky boy. It's so colorful too. I love it. One and a black for a 2-2 fungus. Three and a Phyrexian green. Transform it as a sorcery into Blight Sower Thalid. Okay, less cute. Uh, these little guys are cute. Blight Sower Thalid is a 3-3 Phyrexian fungus. When this creature transforms, create a 1-1 green Phyrexian sapperling creature token. Interesting. I don't hate that. Next up, we've got Bloated Processor. Two and a black for a 3-2 a Phyrexian. Sacrifice another Phyrexian. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Bloated Processor. When Bloated Processor dies, incubate X where X is its power. Interesting. So it gives you something in return. I like that. It's going to be good in the Sacrifice decks. In the uh, Ayara deck, for sure. It's just going to keep getting bigger. And then if your opponent does manage to kill it, Without exiling it, you get an incubator token with X. Pretty decent. Uh, next up, we have Breach the Multiverse. Oh, big, big spender. Five black black, so seven mana total for a sorcery. Each player mills ten cards. For each player, choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Then each creature you control becomes a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. Interesting. Okay. That's a lot to process, but the play patterns are going to be pretty fun. Then we've got Collective Nightmare. Oh, this art is gorgeous too. Uh, Collective Nightmare is two and a black for an instant with Convoke. So just, uh, I don't know if we've gone over it quite yet. No. Convoke. Uh, as a reminder, is creatures you control can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one uh, colorless or one mana of that creature's color. And Collective Nightmare says target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. So even at full value, it's three mana for an instant um, kill anything with toughness three or less is pretty good. Um... If you have a bunch of tokens or stuff that isn't going to do any combat this turn or block this turn, if you're playing this on your opponent's turn, convoking it to make it cheaper, you could play it for free if you've got three creatures. Um, I think that's pretty good. It's not bad. Next up, we have completed Huntmaster. Two and a black for a 2-3 Phyrexian Elf Warrior. Pay one, tap it, sacrifice another creature or artifact, and incubate three. So again, as a reminder, incubating means that you create an incubator token and you put the number of incubation on it in, in the form of 1-1 one, one counters. So incubate 3 means you get 3 1-1 one, one counters, and then you pay 2 to transform the incubator token into a 0-0 zero, zero Phyrexian artifact creature. So it will become a 3-3. Three, three. And there's a lot of cards that have incubation on it, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up, we have Consuming Aetherborn, a 3 black 2-2 two, two Aetherborn Vampire with backup 1, um, and its backup ability is Lifelink. So that's not bad. Next up, we have Corrupted Conviction. Oh, this is the part in the story where Johnny cuts Shieldred's head off. Um, one black mana for an instant as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, Draw two cards. That's not bad. One mana, sack something. This is a standard black card. Deadly Derision. Two black black for an instant. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Create a treasure token. Oh, this is just Grim Bounty. All right. I like Grim Bounty. That card saw a lot of play in Limited. Uh, next up, we have Dread Dreg. Recycler. One and a black for a 2-2 two, two Phyrexian Beast. Tap it, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. There's a lot of sacrifice in this color. 
uh, for this set. Next up, we have Etched Familiar, which is the Phyrexianized version of that cute little fox that we had uh, a couple sets ago. Two and a black for a 3-2 Phyrexian Fox artifact creature. When it dies, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So there's your sacrifice target right there. Um, and we have Etched Host Doombringer. Four and a black for a 3-5 Phyrexian Demon. When Etched Host Doombreaker, Doombringer enters the battlefield, choose one. Target opponent loses two and you gain two. Choose target battle. If an opponent protects it, Remove three defense counters from it. Otherwise, put three defense counters on it. Oh, okay. So you can extra protect your battles you're protecting or help you remove battles that your opponent is protecting. Interesting. Uh, next up, we have Failed Conversion. Four and a black for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets a minus four, minus four. When it dies, surveil two. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's expensive. Actually, it is bad. It's way too expensive. Way too expensive. Maybe if it had Convoke. I like the Surveil too, though. I like Surveilling. Next up, we have Final Flourish. One and a black for an instant with Kicker. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. If the spell was kicked, that creature gets minus six, minus six until end of turn instead so another reason to sacrifice things and next up we have flitting gorilla two and a black for a two two fairy rogue with flying when flitting gorilla dies each player mills two cards then you may exile flitting gorilla when you do put target creature or battle card from your graveyard on top of your library that's pretty decent and then we've got Gift of Completion. I don't know if it's a gift, but um, one and a black for an enchantment. When Gift of Completion enters the battlefield, incubate three. Interesting. Whenever a Phyrexian you control dies, surveil one. I mean, that's not bad, actually. Incubate three on ETB, so you have something to do next turn. Um... And it gives you a Phyrexian, so you get to surveil every time a Phyrexian. It seems like there's two very potent builds. Um, either you want to have no Phyrexians in your deck, or you want to have only Phyrexians in your deck. And I think that's very interesting. Glistening Deluge. One black black for a sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Creatures that are green or white get an additional minus two, minus two until end of turn. So this is a great sideboard card against green or white. Um, very potent to give everything minus three, minus three uh, for three mana. Very, very good. I like this card quite a bit. I wish... I, I like parts of this art, but I don't love all of it. I wish the art was more potent. And I feel bad for saying that because these artists work so hard on these amazing pieces. Um, and there's a lot to love about what's on this card. I just It just feels like it's missing something. Maybe if it was like the angle of it was a little bit different, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, speaking of art, Jesus. Gloomfang Mauler. Five black black for a five five nightmare with swamp cycling. Okay, so this is the land cycling card for black um swamp cycling means that you can pay two to discard this card and search your library for a swamp card reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle um there is a cycling card a land cycling card in all of the colors so far so and most of the time that's kind of what they're best used for the actual cards haven't been that good so far so these are going to be limited um, favorites. Definitely a good card to pick up in limited, especially if you're able to cycle it for a, a land, if you're missing land drops or need that extra uh, land for something. Otherwise, Gloomfang Mauler has backup two, which means you could put two 1-1 counters on target creature. 
and you can give that creature menace as well. Next up, we have Grafted Butcher. One and a black for a 2-2 Phyrexian Samurai at rare. When Grafted Butcher enters the battlefield, Phyrexians you control gain menace until end of turn. Other Phyrexians you control get plus one, plus one. Dang. This is a beast Phyrexian Lord. Uh, pay three and a black, sacrifice an artifact or creature, return Grafted Butcher from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Dang. So it's undying as well. So you have to exile Grafted Butcher. Sheesh. Uh, Hoarding Broodlord is five black, black, black for a seven, six dragon with Convoke and Flying. When Hoarding Broodlord enters the battlefield, search your library for a card. Exile it face down, then shuffle. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may play it. Spells you cast from exile have Convoke. Huh. So this is a huge body that you can play uh, for a discount because it has Convoke. Then it tutors something. It says search your library for a card. You can search for anything. You exile that card face down so your opponent doesn't get to see it. And then even if the card you've exiled doesn't have Convoke, Broodlord gives cards in exile Convoke. That's that's a very interesting card design. I like it. I like it. It's way too expensive. But in a format where maybe you're making a bunch of tokens or making a bunch of little creatures, you know, this gets cheaper and and not too bad. Next up we have Icker Drinker. One black for a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian vampire with lifelink. Pay black, exile Icker Drinker from your graveyard, incubate two, activate only as a sorcery. That's not bad. I like the one ones for one that can do something else once they die. Um, there's a few different variants of them, but this one's pretty good. You get an incubation token. Plus it's a Phyrexian, so if you've got that synergy going, then that'll work out for you. Uh, next up we have Icker Shade. Two and a black for a 2-3 Phyrexian Shade. At the beginning of your end step, if an artifact or creature was put the, into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Icker Shade. So it's just a 2-3 three for 3 that gets bigger if things die. Not bad. Or get discarded. It doesn't say it has to die. Uh, next up we have our first black battle. Invasion of Eldraine. Three and a black for a battle siege. So again, sieges are a new card type. I'm going to say this every color. Sieges are a new card type. Battles are a new card type, sorry. And siege is the subtype for this battle cycle. So all of the battles in March of the Machine are sieges, but sieges are a subtype. So the rules on this card only apply to sieges. Other battles in the future might have a different subtype and might contain different rules. Um... So the rules for a siege are, as a siege enters, choose an opponent to protect it. You and others can attack it. When it's defeated, exile it, and then cast it transformed, so the backside of it. Um, it's basically giving your opponent a Planeswalker-type card without any abilities on it. It's something that they want to protect because usually the backside of the battles are pretty good. Um, so when Invasion of Eldraine enters the battlefield... Target opponent discards two cards, and then it's got four counters on it. Once you defeat those four counters, knock it down to zero, it transforms into Prickle Fairies. Prickle Fairies is a 2-2 fairy creature with flying. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has two or fewer cards in hand, Prickle Fairies deals two damage to them. Interesting. Um, and then we've got another battle right up again. Invasion of Fiora. Four black black for a battle siege with four counters on it. Uh, when Invasion of Fiora enters the battlefield, choose one or both. Destroy all legendary creatures or destroy all non-legendary creatures. Um, that It's expensive, but... 
we're six mana for a board wipe that you get to choose either wipe everything or wipe one particular kind of thing. That's pretty good. Uh, it has four counters on it. And then um, once you defeat it, it transforms into Marchesa Resolute Monarch. A 3-6 legendary creature, human noble, with menace and death touch. Whenever Marchesa Resolute Monarch attacks, remove all counters from up to one target permanent. Damn. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you haven't been dealt combat damage since your last turn, draw a card and lose a life. I think that's the first time I've ever seen those specific words on a magic card before. If you haven't been dealt combat damage since your last turn, you get something. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that. Um, next up is another battle. This one's backwards, so I've had to make sure I click on the right one. Um, Invasion of Innistrad is two black black for a mythic battle siege with flash when invasion of innistrad enters the battlefield target creature and opponent control gets minus 13 minus 13 until end of turn whoa okay so you can cast this at flash speed for four mana and just give something minus 13 minus 13 you can kill an emirate cool for four mana that's pretty good um, when you defeat it, it turns into Deluge of the Dead. Enchantment. When Deluge of the Dead enters the battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Then you can pay two and a black. Exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. I like that quite a bit. I mean that's a it's a decent board wipe. Not not a board wipe, sorry. It's a decent removal spell. I mean you pay two black black for that grim bounty um variant that we saw earlier. This is going to almost guarantee kill anything. It also gets around indestructible counters because it's minus one minus one, or it's minus thirteen minus thirteen. So it's not it can be useful in a pinch. It does bounce off Hexproof, but it gets around indestructible. That's pretty great. I like that a lot. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of Olgrotha. Four and a black for a battle siege. When Invasion of Olgrotha enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to any other target and you gain three life. It has five counters on it. When you defeat it, it turns into Grandmother Ravi Sengir. A 3-3 three, three human wizard legendary creature. A human wizard? It's not a vampire? Flying. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Grandmother Ravi Sengir and gain a life. Interesting. So it's got the Sengir Vampire um, ability, basically. Except for this one gains a life. That's not that's not bad. It's kind of fun. And you get to deal three damage to anything and gain a life and gain three life. Not too shabby. Uh, next up, we have Merciless Repurposing. Poor Urabrask. Uh, four black black for an instant exile target creature incubate three. That's pretty good. That is just a good removal spell straight up. Uh, next up we have, okay, story spoilers. Mirrodin avenged. One black for an instant destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Draw a card. So this is the exact same card as the Kamigawa. Um, you are already dead. The uh, Omayu oh card. Um, destroy something that was dealt damage. Draw a card. One black. Instant speed. Exact same card, just with different name. Um, and obviously, Karn holding up his new um, race car spoiler on it. Everyone, car people are just always excited when they get a new piece for their car. So I don't blame him. 
Uh, next up, we have Nazumi Freewheeler. This is cool. Look at that. I love the Japanese-inspired bikes, too. Uh, Nazumi Freewheeler is three and a black for a 3-3 three, three Rat Samurai with Menace. When Nazumi Freewheeler enters the battlefield, each player mills three cards. Okay. This is going to be good for um, the Grease Fang deck, isn't it? Pay five and a Phyrexian White, so it's in the Grease Fang colors. Transform Nazumi Freewheeler into Hideous Flesh Wheeler. Oh no. A Phyrexian Rat, four five with Menace. When this creature transforms, put target permanent card with mana value two or less from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Not bad. Uh, next up, we have Nazumi Informant. Oh, I love this one. Oh, look at the Phyrexian symbols in the reflections there. Uh, one on a black, one one, Rat Rogue. When Nazumi Informant enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Um... It's Beetle. It's, um, what was the name of the new Capanna variant? He was like a lawyer or something. Anyway, it's Virus Beetle. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one that forces an opponent to discard. I like them a lot. Next up, we have Phyrexian Gargantua. Four black black for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Horror. When Gargantua enters the battlefield, you draw two cards and lose two life. Of course, I'd rather it hadn't skinned six of my best wizards, but as Nightmare Fuel goes, it's a truly inspired design, says Braids. What flavor text? Uh, next up, we have Pile On. Three and a black for an instant with Convoke. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Surveil two. This is amazing, actually. Um, this might be the best removal spell in the whole set. It has Convoke, so if, if your opponents play something scary, you can tap your stuff to help play this. You get to destroy something and you get to Surveil. This is amazing. Uh, next up, we have Render Inert. Two and a black for a sorcery. Remove up to five counters from target permanent. Draw a card. That's pretty crazy. Um, counters. There's so many different types of counters. Um, you can shut down any of the Phyrexian tokens that people have been making through incubation. You can like almost instantly kill every battle or siege in the set. Um, you could kill most if not all planeswalkers you ever come across um pretty pretty interesting for three mana remove five counters from something pretty cool uh next up we have scorn blade berserker scorn blade berserker that's kind of a tongue twister one black for an o1 human berserker with backup um, you can give something else one counter and the following abilities. Pay one, sacrifice this creature, draw a card. Interesting. So you'd probably want to play this, give something else back up. So give something else the counter. And then the following turn, pay one to sacrifice this creature, the Scorn Blade Berserker, because it's just an O one one Or you could make it a 1-2, I guess. But then you don't want to sacrifice the one two. Anyway, next up we have Shieldred. Shelly is back. Shelly has been a menace in standard, um, actually in every format. Shelly has invaded every format. Um, the latest version of Shieldred, the Apocalypse, huge, amazing card. Um, it's potent. If you're playing black, you pretty much have to play Sh Shelly. Um, it's kind of the same thing as playing Red and playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, but this new cycle of Praetors is interesting because there's a lot to them. Um, so Shieldred is three black black for a 4-5 Phyrexian Praetor legendary creature with Menace. When Shieldred enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. 
interesting. And then you pay four and a black, exile Shieldred, return it to the battlefield. Um, only if an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Also interesting. Um, it flips into the true scriptures. Chapter one, for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls. Chapter two, each opponent discards three cards that mills three cards. Chapter four. Three, put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Jesus. So the Praetors are crazy. Elish Norn is actually... So we've seen three of them so far. Elish Norn is probably the, the weakest of the three so far. I would say Shieldred is probably the most powerful. This one's crazy. But they're a little bit hard to activate. They cost a lot of mana, but there's also stipulations like this one. You have to have eight or more cards in your opponent's graveyard. Um, but what you get out of transforming it is like game ending. There's no, this is like instant concede. Um, I feel like the only time these cards are ever going to get played and stay on the battlefield is in commander matches. And I think these are really cool commander cards. Um, they are legendary creatures, so they can actually be your commander, which is neat. Um, but all of the stuff that you get, put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield. In almost any circumstance, that is game ending. So, quite amazing. Um, I think the ranking so far is Shieldred, Jin Kataxius, Elish Norn. Uh, but again, I might be wrong. Elish Norn just makes a lot of incubators and then transforms them um we'll have to see how they all play out in real life next up we have tenured oil caster uh three and a black for a two four phyrexian wizard with menace tenure oh oh tenured oil caster gets plus three plus oh as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard Whenever a tenured oil caster attacks or blocks, each player mills a card. It's expensive, um, but it's four mana for potentially a five four, which isn't too bad with menace. I think if you're playing the mill, I think there's a new standard deck uh, that's going to have some mill in it. So keep your eyes out for that one. Uh, traumatic revelation, one in a black for a sorcery target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a creature or battle card from it. If you do, that player discards that card. If you don't, incubate three. Um, this is a very sad moment in the story. Again, shout out uh, to our own YouTube channel. We have narrated versions of the entire March of the Machine main storyline on YouTube. They were super fun to record. I think I'm going to keep doing them for sets in the future. Um, but yeah, check those out if you're interested in the story. Uh, this is fine. It's a pilfer, but you could also throw out battles. It's, it's not great. I'd rather have a pilfer because then I could throw out anything, but, um, unseal the necropolis two and a black for an instant. Each player mills three cards. Then you return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, that's not bad. And last but not least for black vanquish the weak. Two and a black, instant, destroy target creature with power three or less. Look at Atraxa just standing there. She just Sparta kicked some poor guy off the building in New Capenna. When Atraxa first arrived, the people of New Capenna rejoiced at the sight of such a grand angel. Then the slaughter began. That's dark. That's dark. So, I mean, obviously, Shieldred is super powerful, but I think the big um, sleeper hit in this set or this color is going to be Invasion of Innistrad. Um, actually, is that my pick? I don't know if that's my pick, actually. I think Final Flourish is, is a good choice. Um, I 
There was something I was... I mean, okay. I think that the... I think the Ayara transform card is going to be the hit of black. Um, you know, it transforms into a Rakdos sacrifice outlet. Um, it's going to be huge. That deck is already immensely popular. Um, it just won the uh, qualifier, the regional championship in San Diego at DreamHack. Both decks in the finals were Rakdos Sacrifice Reanimator decks. Um, so Ayara is going to be a very interesting combination addition to that deck. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm the most excited for some of the rogues. I think Littering Gorilla is really cool. Um, Glistening Deluge is a really great removal card to sideboard in against green or white. Uh, Grafted Butcher is an amazing Phyrexian Lord. Also a good sacrifice outlet. And there's some cool things um, that are coming from the battles. So I think those are cool too. Marchesa, obviously a very powerful card. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for... Uh, black. I think I'm most excited for Aether Blade Agent, but that's just me. Aether Blade Agent and the new, um, the new Virus Beetle. This little guy, Zumi Informant. Very excited for those. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll jump into red. We'll be back.